الله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته brothers and sisters welcome back to another episode of the inner dimensions of worship we've been discussing about zakah and sadaqa and how do we create within ourselves that inner state that inner dimension so that our sadaqa is really done with the right way of thinking the right heart and in this way insha'Allah ta'ala it will be truly acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we were talking about trying to find people who are the most worthy recipients of your zakah and your sadaqa rather than just giving it to anybody so we mentioned giving it to the pious people the people who are worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who are dedicated to that and then we talked about the importance of helping scholars and students of knowledge seeking knowledge brothers and sisters without doubt is one of the most important and noblest pursuits that a human being can engage in and here we mean of course seeking the knowledge of the deen and the religion of Islam because the superiority of uh, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge of his deen is like subhanallah the brightness of the sun compared to the stars so subhanallah supporting the students of knowledge and supporting the scholars is a means for great blessing and great benefit for yourself in this dunya and the akhirah so subhanallah the scholars are none other brothers and sisters than the inheritors of the prophets the prophets do not leave behind dinars and dirhams but what do they leave behind they leave behind this knowledge this knowledge of how can we know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can we worship our lord how can we live our life in a way that is pleasing to allah and the benefit of this brothers and sisters is for all of the humanity and indeed every single creature benefits when the human beings are acting in accordance to the guidance of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then definitely if we can support those people and we can support people so that they can devote themselves to study and learn in the deen this is very good and unfortunately brothers and sisters learning and seeking knowledge of the deen has taken something of a back seat in modern times you find that there are many people now who will become doctors and they will become engineers and parents will subhanallah they will look at their children and they will think well this one is very intelligent he should become a doctor and this one is very intelligent he should become an engineer oh this one he's not so smart we'll send him to the madrasa or to dar al -Lum or to some place to study religious knowledge this subhanallah actually goes back to not giving the best of your wealth in sadaqah if you want to do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you should give the best for Allah so how is it that we will encourage the people with intelligence the people with ability to become our scholars to seek knowledge if subhanallah they cannot be supported and this is the case also brothers and sisters very important there is a great need to support du'at to support the people who are calling to islam there are so many places still in the world today to whom the message of islam has not reached so brothers and sisters this is very important to support these people as well the poor people amongst the callers to islam subhanallah I recently came from a trip to africa and the brothers there subhanallah there are many of them who are callers to islam they live barely on subhanallah they have so little income and it takes so little to support one of those people subhanallah maybe a hundred dollars a month they would be able to feed themselves and their family and pay for their rent and this would free their time up to give dawah and subhanallah believe me brothers and sisters in africa i have experienced and seen that all you need to do is talk to people and hundreds of people mashallah they will become muslim so brothers and sisters we should seek these people out and we should help them and support them 
with our zakah where possible and if not with our sadaqah insha'Allah ta'ala because the reward in all of these things is great and tremendous. So this is much more appropriate than just subhanAllah handing out our money, not really caring or thinking deeply about where it goes. Brothers and sisters, you know, if you are making an investment in this dunya or you are investing in a business or any other thing, you would make effort. You would make a real effort, subhanAllah, to make sure that your investment reached its maximum potential. Why is it when it comes to Allah and his deen and spending in his path, we don't take that type of effort in order to do that because well this is the problem brothers and sisters that we've been talking about we don't think deeply about how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are missing this inner dimension this deep thinking and deep understanding that should really accompany our ibadah and we've seen that deep thinking from the examples we have been giving of those generations who came before us the Prophet and his companions and the ones who followed them we can see how they really took care and they were so careful in respect to these actions for the Akhirah. So, who else, subhanAllah, should we look for in order to give our sadaqah? Now, this group of people that I'm going to mention, the third group of people, may sound like the first group. So, the third group is people who are really sincere in singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for worship. People who you can recognize in them a very high level of singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me actually explain this with an example because once I do that, what I mean by this will become clearer insha'Allah. These are people who subhanAllah, if they receive sadaqah, if they receive charity, or if they receive zakah, you will find that they will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they will praise Allah for his blessing that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him rather than the intermediary. So this person you will find is someone who is truly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and truly recognizes that all blessings flow from him. So Luqman, for example, he said to his son, no one as a benefactor between yourself and Allah, but count the favors you receive from others as a liability. And an example of this is again, when the slandering of Aisha occurred and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the innocence of Aisha to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when this happened, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, said to his daughter Aisha, get up and kiss the head of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Aisha, she said, subhanallah, wallahi by Allah, I am not going to do that. I will give thanks to no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, leave her alone, Abu Bakr. And according to another version, Aisha said, that the praise is for Allah, not yours, nor that of your friend. What she meant by this, or what she also said was that this revelation was from Allah. This was not from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I should be praising and thanking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, not the intermediate tree, it is Allah who pronounced my innocence. This was the knowledge that had come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And remember all of this time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was silent. He had no idea, of course he believed that Aisha was innocent, but subhanAllah, he had a duty and since he was a judge as well, he had to adopt some position of impartiality. This was his responsibility, subhanAllah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the innocence of Aisha to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is subhanAllah, the recognition of Aisha, her tawheed, her understanding of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She is saying the thanks is for Allah, not for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he is just the means. So why should I be thanking him? So this is what I mean. So the point being here, brothers and sisters, that when you are looking for people to give your sadaqah, look for those type of people who are going to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. Why? Because this will also 
be the furthest from your own self of seeking some type of recognition, some type of praise, some type of thanks, which goes back to what we have been talking about. That is not the condition you want your heart to be in. You don't want you to be thinking of yourself as the benefactor. Rather, this is just you are benefiting from being able to give the charity as we keep on mentioning. So we're going to take a break. Insha'Allah, we'll be back with you after the break. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, welcome back. We were talking about seeking out certain types of people in order for them to be the recipients of your zakah. And that there are certain type of people who if you give your zakah to them, it is going to be much more beneficial to yourself. So we were talking about that category of people who subhanAllah, they only mention Allah and they only praise Allah and this is their connection with Allah, they only see that this provision has come to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't really see the person who is the intermediary, they just see it as coming straight from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, just a further reflection upon this, brothers and sisters, that this thinking that things are emanating from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is actually a mark of a person who does not truly believe in Allah. So for example, you find in Surah Al-Zumar, which is the 39th Surah in Ayah 45, and Allah is mentioning, and when Allah alone is mentioned, they contract with aversion the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter. But when those apart from Him are mentioned, see how they rejoice. So you find these people, brothers and sisters, when Allah alone is mentioned, their hearts don't like it. But when the partners, other things, maybe the gods that they worship, or other people, or themselves are mentioned, then they feel this type of joy and they feel this rejoicing. It shows that the opposite is true, that the hearts of the believer, in reality, their hearts are filled with joy when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is mentioned and their hearts are filled with aversion when those intermediate trees or those perceived intermediate trees are mentioned. So, again brothers and sisters, this is just really emphasizing the importance, alhamdulillah, of not seeing yourself as this intermediate tree, rather seeing these intermediate tree for what they really are, that they are something that is really, it is just the conduit through which the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come. Okay, so there is a fourth type of recipient that we should talk about and that is that a person who has remained anonymous and kept the need to themselves. So this really involves you seeking out certain types of people. Now, the thing about these people, brothers and sisters, it's not really obvious that they are needy, although in fact they really are needy. But they are not people who complain, they are not people who talk about their need, subhanAllah. They are one of those magnanimous people, although they don't have money, they don't have resources, they still remain very content and they remain unaffected by that condition. Because this is, subhanAllah, they have found their contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though they have these needs. And so, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about certain groups of believers and in Surah Al-Baqarah and He says about them that the ignorant man thinks of them as being rich because of their restraint. But you shall know them by their mark. They do not beg of men inopportunately. So what this means, brothers and sisters, that there are certain people and because of their restraint and because of the fact that they do not beg, ignorant people think that they are rich. You see, because that's how a rich person behaves. A rich person does not beg. So a person may look at them or look at their behavior and think, oh, these people don't need anything. In fact, in reality, they do. But mashallah, you know, they have just cultivated that inner condition within themselves they have that type of honor, they have that type of dignity, they have that type of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they don't make a nuisance of themselves by begging, 
they do have wealth actually they have the best type of wealth and that is contentment and yaqeen and certainty subhanallah and they have that strength and that endurance so this is of course a great type of wealth this is the true wealth but monetarily we're talking about in other words they're still worthy of receiving zakah but you don't find them asking and begging for it so really you should look out for those type of people in order to be able to give them your zakah and your sadaqah because they are truly truly deserving of it and again it is similar to supporting the righteous and the pious and the students of knowledge this type of person also falls into that category alhamdulillah because this is a real sign of their devotion and their piety and their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the fourth type of person now the fifth type of person that you should seek out in order to give your sadaqa is somebody who has a large family or someone who is disabled by some illness or some other cause as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah for the poor who are restrained in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this could also mean people who are spending their time in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned the du'at and those people other people who are struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the highest and because of that they can't engage in trade it's very hard for them to hold down a job subhanallah you know this is something i had experience of myself subhanallah when for many many years i was in this condition traveling going around giving talks giving lectures unfortunately there were very few if any brothers and sisters who really recognized what type of commitment this takes and what type of burden this can put on the family of a dai and you know subhanallah my wife sometimes would beg me please get a job do anything you know be a postman whatever i had some things that i was doing but most of the time this was not enough to even provide for the basic necessities and our situation was very very difficult and we found ourselves getting into debt but i said to my wife well if i get a job how am i going to give these talks how am i going to give these lectures subhanallah who is going to benefit the people and of course alhamdulillah i knew I knew and I was certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would support me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help me. I just had to be patient. And alhamdulillah, the help of Allah and the support of Allah is always near. But brothers and sisters, very few people realize the need, subhanallah, of the du'at and these people who are struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make a special effort to look for these people and to support them. And these people, subhanAllah, because of their responsibilities, because of their large family, they are suffering many difficulties and many problems. And they cannot travel about the earth, perhaps, subhanAllah, because of their commitment to their large family. This also makes things difficult for them. So, brothers and sisters, take time to find those people and help them with your zakah and help them with your sadaqah now the final category of person that we should give charity to and we should mention is actually a close relative whether it's paternal or maternal it doesn't matter because the benefit of giving to your relatives to kindred to kin is subhanallah much much greater than giving to anyone else and this is proven and established by sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also it's reported that Ali once said to present one of my brothers with a single coin is dearer to me than giving 20 in arms while to present him with 20 is dearer to me than giving a hundred and to present him with a hundred is dearer to me than freeing a slave so the point being here is that giving to relatives giving to your close friends and your close acquaintances is also you know it's better to prefer them to people who are distant why the reason is brothers and sisters because all of this 
increases the bonds of love, builds the ties of relationship, increases the love and closeness between your relatives and your friends. So the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith which is collected by Bukhari and Muslim, charity given to a poor person is charity, but charity given to a relative is two things, charity and upholding the ties of kingship. So mashallah, the beautiful thing here is that when you give charity to your close relatives who are deserving of it, of course, then it has two benefits. Number one, the benefit of the actual charity. And number two, the benefit of building the ties of relationship. And subhanAllah, you can find even more benefits. And that is, for example, giving charity to a relative that you are actually not very close with. In other words, maybe there's a problem between you and some type of relative. So even better to seek out that type of person to give charity to them because that has even more benefits. Alhamdulillah. So there are other categories of people, Alhamdulillah, who we should subhanAllah give charity to. And those people are the ones who are most like our relatives. And the best example of this, of course, is the neighbor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the neighbor who is near of kin and the neighbor who is a stranger. So this is mentioned in the Quran, so that kindness is due to them, both the neighbor who is a relative and the neighbor who is a stranger. So of course, the ties of neighborliness are very important in Islam. And Jibreel, it's mentioned, he kept on telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the importance of the neighbor to the extent that the Prophet thought that Jibreel was going to make the neighbor share in the inheritance. So neighbors in this respect are very like relatives and if they are worthy of being recipients of zakah, you should inshallah also give to them. That's the end of this episode. Join us for some more insights into the inner dimensions of giving zakah in the next episode. Until then, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.